What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news and the most interesting people with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. And today is another one of those episodes. We have a very special someone yes. in the in with us. How will you describe this this gentleman in three words, Terrence? Uh a fucking populist. Wow, my draw. We totally did not set that up. <laughs> good one, good one. <laughs> no, but yeah. And uh, not a true. Yeah, how would you describe this man in three words? Uh enigmatic, trailblazer, and uh articulate. Mm. Yeah. Wow. You? All praiser. I mean, he, we just starting the podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, he just came on. Yeah, he yeah. took time out of his day. Okay, like, There's a good balance to what I said. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, Ken. Okay, cool, cool. So, without further ado, welcome back, Sudhir. Thanks, man. Thanks for having mm, me. Yeah, this is nice to be here. Nice to be back, man. This is the. I was just looking at the previous episodes that you did with us. The first one was in April 2021, mm. then June 2021, and then August 2022. So, this is the first in 2023, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Almost yeah. a year. I didn't realize. Okay, yeah, it's okay, almost okay. a year, yeah, man. man. Wow. You Almost all have been a, a bit slack in inviting me, man. I mean, you want to check the message history? <laughs> How many fucking times we ask you and you are the one, okay? I was the one. Or maybe busy, lah. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. I, think, I think he's been very busy, obviously. Uh, I Especially think of late. Uh. Of late. People have been reading a lot of things that Jom has been putting out. Mm-hmm. I was just uh, telling you guys that, uh, yeah, even on my holiday, uh, me and my friend, we were reading John while getting a foot massage in a massage parlor in Taiwan. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, mean, we, we we love our fans, but that's like <laughs> that's like much, sucker, sucker for much, pain, man. <laughs> just, just enjoy your yeah. massage. Too much information, right? Yeah, but yeah, busy uh, guy. Yeah. yeah, how 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 is how is Jom? Because you started it when we uh, started working together in February twenty two. Mm. And we launched in August 22. Mm. So I guess it's all been almost a year that we've been live. Mm. Yeah, so it's great. I, I, I'm I finally getting used to uh, management, I think, a oh. little bit, which has been one of my big stress points, right? Because uh, I, I was coming off 10 years of, of being a solo sort of writer mm. before starting Jom, mm. uh, co-founding Jom with two other people. So I think the management part of it was new to me. Um, you know, uh, having oversight over a whole bunch of things, including everything from investors and finance to, you know, day-to-day management. That was mm. all new to me. La. You mm, know, yeah. I, I know other people are used to it, but that, and I think uh, maybe it took me about six months to get used to the stress of that. Mm. And and how do you learn? Like 10-year series and all, is it? Like a good old Singaporean? <laughs> I, I, I wish they had those. Uh, hey, but actually, some of the some of the stuff you you guys uh, asked me to listen to was great, like Gimlet. Oh. Oh, okay, mm, okay, right? okay. okay. Uh, yeah. that, that was very inspirational. Thanks for that. But also a couple of uh, just friends who are advisors lah, on mm-hmm. the business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they always have a year uh, whenever I need to talk to them. Um but I think also it's just it's just time lah. It's mm-hmm. just you yeah. know going through the motions and get just getting used to it. But looking uh, back on this past year, yeah. is is uh like there must have been a lot of surprises along the way and like where you are at now. When you look back, was like oh shit, well, how 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 did we make this happen? Do you have that feeling? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are different kinds of surprises. I can kind of talk through them as they come into my head. But um, one for sure was around our pricing and subscription tiers. Mm. Mm. So, you know, initially we just thought we'll have one price, right? $10 a month for full access. Yeah. But eventually we decided to have three different tiers. And there's a base tier at $10. There's a there's a middle tier at $25 a month. Mm. You, you know, you get our print issue, you get discounts. Uh, and then there's a really high tier. La. There's a high, really high tier called the patron. Mm. Which, and they pay $950 a year. Mm. So somebody asked me to put this in. And I think it's particularly relevant for a society where there's a lot of inequality actually because mm. actually there are people who can afford to pay a lot more to support this kind of venture lah, right yeah. mm. and yeah. and I'm so glad we did that because we have uh, 35 patrons now oh, really? so you know if you think about the numbers right these 35 patrons they are you know they, they are they are offering us like something like $33,000 a year every year mm. which is huge for us right as yeah. a small outfit yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. uh Aside from all our other subscribers, so we we actually now have about a thousand one hundred paying subscribers, mm. oh, and, wow. and another three thousand odd free. So mm. our our newsletter list is about four thousand strong now. Yeah, 
uh, about one quarter of them are actually paying. Oh, nice. And of those paying, you know, 35 are patrons, you know, 950 bucks a year. Yeah. Which is great, lah. So, I mean, that's that's been a big, big surprise. That's helped a lot with the with the numbers. Mm-hmm. And why, why do you think these people are, uh, why do you think they are coming forward to pay so much to support you? Lah? Have they come and given you reasons why? Yeah, I, I, I think um, from the few I've spoken to, it's it's supporting the mission, lah, you know. Mm. They, they, they believe in the mission of independent media in Singapore. Uh, they know of us. I think some of them they were, they're waiting to see what what we put out, la. You know what I mean? Not yeah. not, not all of them signed up on day one or in the first month, you mm. know. But but now that we've got a bit of a track record, you know, we we've put out a, f- a short video as well, so we've got a track record in different formats as well. I think that's given confidence to other people, la, You know, mm, that uh that uh we're we're sort of a semi serious outfit, uh mm. you know, that wants to do a good job with journalism in Singapore, la. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I, so I, yeah, I think it's just mi- is mission and values and and that kind of thing, la. They want to help us, yeah, succeed. Uh, but yeah, these are people for whom nine hundred fifty dollars is like part of their disposable income. It's not. It's not like they're taking debt to to help you. I think so, like, I think so, okay. like, I think so. It's it's. Yeah, I, I mean, just a brief look on the at the names. I think it's your usual like uh, sort of doctor, lawyer, mm. banker type crowd, lah. Mm, you know, I, okay. I, I I don't think they'd worry too much about that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on the ten dollar tier, lah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the annual we, plan so that you save a bit on the ten dollars a month tier. Yeah. <laughs> we we love all our subscribers the same, man. <laughs> and then like, how your team? Like, uh, I know initially when you started, you were. Uh, quite like a core team now now what what does that team structure look oh, like oh yeah 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 so we have uh, four people who are kind of in the core team full timers mm. and we have another four or five who are part timers mm. and yeah it's been nice just seeing that team grow mm. uh you know each person has sort of their own little expertise we've got this weekly product called singapore this week which has you know a bit of society a bit of politics a bit yeah. of history a bit of art and yeah. you know we have different people kind of contributing to that uh, we're actually having our first um, Joe, uh, you know, employees meeting tomorrow. Like the mm. first time, everybody's going to be on a Zoom call. Mm. Oh, okay. Because people are in different parts of the world. My yeah. my co-founder Charmaine spends most of the year in Berlin, okay. where she's doing uh, her PhD, uh, mm. and where her partner is based. Mm-hmm. And you know, Faris, who's our history editor, actually spends most of the year in New York City. Uh, where he's doing his PhD. So mm. we, we have different people around the world and, and so we're actually all getting on a call tomorrow for the first time. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, that's that's quite exciting. Uh, but yeah, it's been, just been nice to see the team grow la, and, and, and see the conversations that we have on our Slack channel and all that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even before this, you were taking a selfie with your back-facing camera. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing today? And you say it's one of your teammates who, or your teammates, younger teammates that have been telling you how to take selfies. Yeah, so. yeah. It's called a Gen Z selfie. Gene, 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 Gene yeah. Hugh, Gen Z, our, yeah. our, our head of research is my, uh, is my Gen Z uh, uh, confidant. So, you know, she teaches me a lot of stuff that, that, yeah. that old people like me don't know about, including how to take selfies. Yeah. I'll be totally honest, I only just learned it last week myself. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Then you're parading <laughs> it, making me seem like a fucking dinosaur. Like that. Uh, I think you are a fucking dinosaur. <laughs> Maybe I am, I am, I am. <laughs> but, but since um since Jom was founded and everything, right, the what has been the most uh, hectic or exciting period for you? Because I imagine now, you know, there's a lot of uh, froth on the surface about elections and presidential elections and everything coming up, right? So are you guys like gearing up for a big thing next year with the general elections or uh, or has there been a more busy period uh, in the history of Jomla? Uh, I think we have busy periods when there's, you know, an issue or, or a story that uh, we're not sure how to cover. Mm, mm, so mm. a good example in recent months was the this guy called Tangaraju, who mm. Singapore, you know, very unfortunately, sadly, horrifically, uh, sent uh, you know to the gallows mm, mm, right mm, mm. he was trafficking I think just over a kilogram of, of weed yeah. which again for me you know it's one thing about the death penalty which I'm against but f- for especially weed. for a substance like weed you know to, which yeah. it itself doesn't really kill anybody uh, for, for, for that to, you know for somebody to be uh, hung for that right um, and, and we, had, we had a lot of difficulty trying to write that particular blurb mm, because mm. there was in, in my view there was a lot of noise on social media lah you yeah. know what actually happened in the case? Did he actually handle the drugs? Did, did he actually have a, a Tamil interpreter or not? So that th- those very specific things lead to some like acute stress, lah, head job, right? Because mm-hmm. we have different viewpoints in the team, and everybody gets a hearing, and we got to figure out what's the responsible way to cover it. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, there w- there were a few uh, outlets who three or four weeks after the fact got pofmat mm, mm. because of how they covered it. Really? Yeah. 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 Thankfully, Joe was not one of them. Uh-huh. So I'm happy to say we, I, I think our there was there was one demonstration about you know the rigor in our in our editorial room. Um, but yeah, so. Th- those those sorts of things are the ones where you know it's, it gets a bit stressful out Thursday mm, night because yeah. we publish every Friday morning. Mm. In terms of your, your I, I guess a, a longer way of answering your question in terms of a, a particularly busy season lah, right? Yeah. yeah, I think the election would be one lah, uh, mm. and and uh, we're using the presidential election as a bit of a warm up mm, mm-hmm. to just make sure that you know I'm I'm recruiting an election team to to help with the coverage. And then, of course, the warm up will help for the eventual general election, lah, which yeah. has to be called by twenty twenty five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, mm, but yeah. wasn't there a period as well when? Uh, and I'm I'm quite proud that we got you on the podcast way before it happened. Uh, but when your Oxley Road piece was brought mm. up in Parliament. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's that true. That, oh whole, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's true. That's there was right. That's big right. That's rush right. Rush of blood to the head again, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's and, right. And I was very proud because. We already had you on the podcast talking about it like almost like, I don't know, eight months prior. Yeah. And then to be able to post the clips and say, hey, you want to hear about, hear it from the horse's mouth, right? It's right here. Then I remember when they brought him to Parliament, I was like, yeah, that's a boy. That's a boy. <laughs> Getting a shout out from <laughs> Tio himself. Yeah. I know, I know. I mean, Tio Chi here, eight months before that, I sent him a request for comment. He didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Then Scully wait till he gets into parliament and he starts to whack me. I mean, anyway. Um, yeah. uh, so I, I had half a day of stress over that. Half mm. a day? Half a day of stress okay, over okay. that, right? Because uh, what happened is that it was a Thursday. I remember very clearly. Um, and uh, I got a message from somebody who was in parliament telling me, hey, hey bro, they just mentioned your name. <laughs> I, I had no idea what it was about, right? Because it, it came out of the blue. My, yeah, the, yeah. The, the book had been out for like 10 a months ago, then. Yeah, it it came out of the blue. And yeah. then, um, and then that was at 2 p.m., 3 p.m. And then around 5 p.m., I think, I suddenly had a whole bunch of journalists calling me, la, requesting comment. And I was mm. like, oh shit, okay, this is not something bigger. Um, but then by about 7 or 8 o'clock, I'd been through what was said. I had looked at the document that they passed out in Parliament and, mm. you know, a couple of things were clear. One one was that, you know, I'm not the target. La. They, they were kind of like going after Lee Sien Yang and Lee Sweat Fern, right? Mm. And yeah. I was kind of like collateral damage la, in this in this whole thing, right? Because mm. they, they brought up the whole thing to talk about them, quote unquote, absconding yeah. Uh, yeah. from Singapore and all that kind of thing. Um, so, and, and, and then the other thing that I quickly realized is that uh, some of the allegations that were being made against me and the book were actually quite baseless, la, mm. right? Quite baseless. So it didn't really bother me. La. And, and and then the other thing that gave me confidence is that the actually the mainstream media reporters, like hats off to them who who reached out to me, they, yeah. they all gave me like a fair hearing, mm. right? In fact, a couple of them gave me like almost like the last word in the article, uh, you know? I see, so I, so I... I um, you know, I, I think we sometimes criticize the mainstream media a lot and the people there, but I, I think there are, there are a lot of good people there trying to do good work w- within the obvious constraints that they have, lah, which, yeah. we, which we know about. Um, yeah. so, so, so that was an interesting period because, um, and you guys will appreciate this. So six, for about half a day, I was worried. Yeah. And after that, I was like, hey, how are we going to leverage this to make oh, sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the calm came <laughs> and you started to get, whoa, this is an yeah, opportunity. Yeah, I mean, this is an opportunity. Yeah, of course. You know, and I think all of us in, in independent media have to think like that. When yeah. when 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 we're, we're given the spotlight or the mm. stage for whatever reason, you know, and, and I mean, there's nothing new to this phenomenon, like the Streisand effect or, mm. or whatever, you know, the, the different ways to talk about it. Streisand effect on, on, on the part of the PAP, obviously, because, you know, when they go after people, they just end up giving the person yeah. more prominence, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so then, actually, that was one of the best weekends ever in terms of in, in, ter- <laughs> in terms of subscriptions. <laughs> so that's what you meant including, by including, <laughs> including actually uh, two or three new patrons. patrons uh, two oh, or three new patrons. Uh, shit. They're like, oh, this and, guy is doing this and, work. And there were people, that, that, that there's one patron and I think, you know, this person may have been talking for others as well. He, they, they told me that they had known about us. They had been wanting to support. You know, they just, the busyness of life got in the way. Yeah, and yeah. this thing just brought it to their attention. And they're like, uh, damn, you know, must support. Which, which I think is how these things happen sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, it, 
in in the end the the parliamentary mention was good lah was good mm. for us yeah <laughs> so that's why, I, I, that's why please please was... please talk about me more in parliament whoever's listening <laughs> <laughs> so so up till that point do you how do you feel about that that pdf did it do what you wanted it to do or or did it get get enough conversations going or was that the the icing on the cake uh, i mean it's hard to i i think people who read it i i wish I think at one level, I wish more people read it mm. when it first came out. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have read it after Parliament mentioned yeah. it. But I, I wish more people had read it back then. I think uh, another thing is that, you know, apparently, it, the, the few people who read it really liked it. But apparently, uh, people on either side of the divide weren't too happy. You mm. know, meaning mm. meaning uh, both uh, the pro-establishment side, but also yeah. the the Lee Sien Yang, uh, mm. uh, Lee Sweat Fern, Lee Wailing side. I think you know that side also felt that I I went too easy on the government, oh, and I went too I easy, see. particularly on Ho Ching, right? Uh, who, who in the oh, end, yeah, my, yeah. my my book says I, I don't think Ho Ching did very much wrong in the whole episode, at least what based on available evidence. Mm -mm. So it kind of like didn't please either side in a way. I but see. but actually, as a as a journalist, I'm fine with that. Yeah, mm. you know. That that sometimes means that you know you're actually kind of carving the right line, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it if it doesn't please either side, I, I think you know the 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 outfit that famously talked about this in this in those terms is Al Jazeera, mm. Mm. which which sometimes said that you know it was pissing off both the American side and the Israeli side and the Arab side as well. Uh, you know, at the same time, yeah, yeah, which yeah. which kind of means maybe you're doing the right thing, lah. You yeah. know. Mm, mm. You're being impartial, lah. Yeah. yeah, or or just yeah, or, or or yeah, telling telling the best story, which you know not everybody will like. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah. so are you are you planning like um like is there going to be a big thing for Joe going forward, like in depth, like super in depth, uh, on particular topics, like like seventy eight page PDF kind of. Uh, uh, we would love to. We would love to. My the the area I'm trying to get going, which is taking some time, is actually more in terms of corporate business investigative. Mm. Which for which for me is actually the main gap in Singapore, lah. Like, yeah. it, like I think I think political coverage now is actually not bad. Mm. If you look at all the different sites and commentators yeah. out there, yeah. yeah. If you compare yeah. to like fifteen years ago, I think now people, you know, like Tan Chuan Jin saying something in 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 Parliament. This yeah. you, uh, actually he said it. I think in April. I think the clip yeah, is yeah. from oh, April. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, but it got found out today. Actually, I think it was uh, dug, up, that, dug up on Reddit. Actually, yeah. what was it? Yeah. 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 Oh, down on Reddit. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Reddit, um, really dope, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but you know, you straight away see the backlash, lah. Tons of people commenting, and you know, the the conversation is there, lah, right? Mm, yeah. Whereas I think corporate business investigative, and I'm I'm thinking about companies like Zilingo that mm, went bust. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking even of of your big GLCs, your 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 Singapore Airlines, you know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, just simple questions that you'd have in other democracies, like the taxpayer gave a lot of money to Singapore Airlines over COVID. Yep. Yep. Most Singaporeans would probably say it's justified, right? Our, mm. our 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 national brand, our national airline, all this kind of thing. Yeah. But where did the money go? You know, yeah. what 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 was it? What was being being done with it? All yeah. basic yeah. questions that you'd find in yeah. a lot of other democracies are not being asked here, lah, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, like, I mean, I, I I was on trip. Uh, I took SQ recently. Yeah, still don't have hot towels. <laughs> I took away the hot oh, towels. Never oh, returned the, oh, it. The, oh man, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like the hot towels. Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah, so hot towels are the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. All that money to wear there. Where's the hot towels? That's the question we so need to So you can ask. imagine the only know, thing I on know. Terence's mind during the whole flight. He was like, fucking hot towels. No hot towels. <laughs> no, but there was a real point of contention because I think, uh, yeah, people are saying that, you know, SQ, oh, it suffered so much through the through COVID and then we have to rescue it as a, you know, a national carrier and everything. Then suddenly, eight months bonus for everybody. Yeah. All and the then stuff and record all. profits. Yeah. Yeah. Record profits. So, so um, I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe it's, it's not the case. Maybe let's not be populist about it, but, you know, it's worth asking the same questions. Like, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like how come a company that two, three years ago needed like intervention and now is giving profits, uh, giving, you know, so much bonus. I mean, even our own experience with Hook One, right? Oh, there's okay, there okay. so many questions that, uh, uh, there were yeah. a few pieces that were published, but there's still so many questions about how that company had so much investment, had one of the biggest telcos behind it and it just evaporated overnight. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. And, and I mean, the size of companies that are coming out of Singapore now, you know, billion dollar companies, you know, there's so much shit that probably is going on in the background. Oh, and, and like, I think you yeah. mentioned all the, even the startup space, yeah. Zlingo, Honest B. Honest, yeah, exactly. Honest places, right? A lot of interesting things happen, but 
yeah, there's not very very in depth, uh, you yeah. know, exposés about what exactly happened. And 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 there's a there's a serious structural issue, like, I think that we all need to think about, which is hard to address. But um, advertisers have so much leeway in Singapore, mm. right? You know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. for media outfits, yeah. and 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 that's why I think a lot of if you look at especially at the mainstream media. You know, uh, the big GLCs, the Singapore Airlines of the world, are such mm. big advertisers, right? Yeah. For them, they depend on on them for a lot of money. So there's a there's a natural uh, structural problem with them ever having good investigative journalism la, on these mm. companies. Mm. When, when you compare it to a lot of other countries, where I think advertisers don't have such power over media outfits. I see, I see. Yeah. And advertisers here includes both the government and corporations, la, mm. both, right? Yeah. Uh, everything you know, NTUC, all, all you know, all, all these kinds of organizations mm-hmm. have actually yeah. a lot of power over media outfits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, just we're talking about it. Um, you know, in the past six months, uh, everything about SPH Media, you know, the whole the whole pulping issue has blown up, and and whether they should receive funding, all that. And then at the same time, uh, what was seen as an alternative news media outfit, Mothership, uh, has surpassed Straits Times. Uh, in terms of online, uh, people checking for news online. Uh. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, there's oh. a statistic. Oh, wow, okay, that Officially, okay. it's like number one in oh, Singapore shit. already. So, Interesting. You know, all this has happened in the span of the last year and a half, like, right, since yeah. you started Drum, you know. Uh, what do you see as like the biggest changes in the, you know, in the whole media space in Singapore? Right, e- in, the, in the last one, two years? Uh? Yeah. Well, I think, I think SPH and, and the, and the, and public money going to SPH is a big thing. Mm. Uh, the, the loss of credibility because of the whole pulping issue. Uh, but for me, I guess the biggest thing would just be the diversity of channels out there mm. that I see emerging, la, mm. uh, okay. which is which is very uh, uh, encouraging for me. I mean, Jome is one of them. You know, and I, I include Instagram, you know, commentators and channels and things as well, la, right? Mm, Whether it's Lepa Conversations, Wake Up Singapore. I mean, Wake mm. Up Singapore is a huge one. Lepa Conversations is a smaller one. Um, and I think you're just seeing a lot more outfits emerging. And that's partly because the audience or the customer as well is is having a growing appreciation for all these outfits. La. Mm. Mm. But is, so, there, is there room for like a traditional journalist, journalist? Like, because last week we were just at a university talking to some uh, some kids there. Yeah. And, you know, they, they talked about wanting to pursue journalism, but now they're like, oh, uh, now I'm doing like social media comms kind of thing, you know? So do you think there's still space for a traditional journalist to thrive in Singapore? Or would it be more about learning how to thrive on social media, you know, like, you know, whether it's Wake Up Singapore or these outlets? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a very important question, actually, because, uh, so on the one hand, I, I think, yeah, there are more and more options for people pursuing traditional journalism mm. and, you know, m- Mothership or, or Must Share News or all these people would be outlets, la, yeah. right? Mm. The people are starting to consider uh, Rice Media. Um, at the same time, Terence, you bring up a really important point because my worry sometimes is that you know, traditional writing, uh, you know, good journalistic skills that go into producing a piece of good written content yeah. are sometimes being forgotten in terms, uh, in, in favor of more sensationalist mm. ways of uh, putting your word out mm. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, whether it's the shift to short form content, whether it's the shift to short messages on Instagram, for example, mm. as yeah. opposed to a long article, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's a format shift, because as we move from, uh, you know, less video to more video content. I, yeah. I think there are a whole bunch of factors around it. La. Um, the the whole uh, metrics and engagement part of it is a big one also, la, right? Yeah. People chasing likes and eyeballs as opposed to try, just trying to produce quality journalism. Yeah. Which, which yeah. So, so uh, uh, it, it is a worry. It is a worry of mine that, that the journalists of today are actually being distracted mm. by other sort of incentives, whether it's in eyeballs or whatever, la as opposed to, you know, just, just getting a good story out there. But has, mm. it, has it trickled down to the way these journalists are trained, even in universities and schools, the curriculum? Has that changed? I don't know enough to answer 100%, but mm. from my convos with uh, students, I don't think it's changed, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, I think, yeah, there's just for some, a bit more of an emphasis on different formats. La. 
I guess I guess I guess OGS our grandfather story is one example of you know journalism kids coming out and doing something on video right yeah mm. yeah um which I think which I think can work quite well uh, mm. but I but I always worry as well that you know if, when when people forget the traditional principles and the and the editorial rigor and things like that that go into good journalism mm. Mm. Can I, sorry can you just give one example of how you know a young person who's you know thinking about going into journalism what yeah, but they end up, you know, like uh, being distracted, so you speak, by social media, all that thing. What is one, like, one, uh, what is something that they might um, not understand about the editorial rigor that comes with journalism that they, if they just pursue, you know, uh, clicks on social media and things like that? Nah? What is something that they are missing out on in terms of uh, editorial rigor? Uh, so so I can I can answer that with the story I mm. illustrated earlier about mm. Tangaraju and and oh, the, yeah. and the yeah. death penalty, sure. mm. right? So when that incident came up, um, I mean when when I say the incident, we, uh, there was notice given that he was going to be hung, lah. Mm. All right, mm. that that was the spark for a lot of discussion, right? When yeah. notice yeah. was given that yeah. he's going to be hung after being on death row for a while. Um, so what happened then is that a lot of people were getting their narratives and their facts from social media commentary, mm. right? Mm. Mm. A- as opposed to just looking at the actual grounds of decision. So the, the you know, the Singapore courts, they put out this, they call it oral grounds or grounds yeah. of decision or something like yeah. that uh, about the case. Mm. And I think, you know, uh, this is what we did at Job, you know, when, when, when you compare what was being said on social media mm. with what, the actual judgment said, yeah. you can see some discrepancies. Mm. And then, you know, then you have to be careful, right? As a, as a, as a proper journalist, you have to be careful because you can't just go and repeat allegations that you might be seeing on social media yeah. uh, if it doesn't square with what the judge actually said. Yeah. And, yeah. You, and they're just ways of phrasing it and things like that. So that that's an example where I think uh, journalists or commentators or people who, you know, they... In many ways, no fault of their own, lah. You know, we we're all we're all trying to uh, make sense of this world, which is we're constantly being bombarded by information. Right? It's yeah, difficult yeah. for all of us, but people who 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 would have spent most of their time just on social media and figuring out, you know, what's the best way for me to create a, a emotive narrative around Tangaraju, so I can get the message out, and mm. you know, uh, and and I think there's an element here as well of people get start feeling a bit activist. Right, mm-hmm. especially if if you if you got very strong feelings against the death penalty, yeah, you know that that sense of activism might sometimes, in, in my view, might sometimes um, cloud your your sort of uh, independent judgment on the case, lah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, with 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 good reason. I mean, I I don't like the death penalty either. So and it's it's an emotive issue, right? We're gonna we're gonna kill somebody. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you, know, you know, it's a serious thing. So I don't blame them again, but 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 I think that's where you can kind of see the lines between you know what activism is about what social media sensationalism might be about mm. but actually what's the accurate rigorous story here la? yeah mm. see, so, see, see. so how do you enforce that because you know like um someone can read your writing before you started joe and you have a very distinct voice and i know this is something that you even um mentioned previously when you were in the midst of starting it you wanted to have a certain voice so now that your team has expanded how do you go about making sure that there's journalistic rigor and also that people have their own voice la, in your team, right? And like, like even creative decisions. How do, how do you work through that? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So in terms of rigor, I'll take rigor mm. first, la, right? It's tough because, you know, we are growing off a, a small base. Mm. Uh, there are always worries. I, I've, made, I've made factual mistakes before. Uh, which then you know don't get checked, uh, not, not, don't get caught by uh, the other editors and mm. fact checkers in our team, mm. and you know again it's it's a collective responsibility, uh, and and of course if we were a much bigger organization we'd have more time, more people, more capacity, mm. okay. but I think we have put in place enough processes now that we have sufficient rigor for me. I in my view it took us about four to five months to get to that level mm. from the time we launched in August t- till I, I felt, oh, you know, now our processes are sufficiently rigorous. Mm. Mm. We still make mistakes. Um, and, you know, the, one of the nice things as well in terms of starting Jome is, is figuring out the sort of fairly healthy relationship we have with the different government agencies. Mm. So, so I'll give an example. We, we, we made a factual error about the, about the uh, AGC, Attorney General's Chambers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
on a Friday morning. We published on Friday morning. Okay. Uh, it, it was a case involving Jolivan Wham holding mm. up the smiley face yep. at, at a placard. You know that, that case? Yeah, so yeah. We, we made a clear factual mistake in our reporting. Uh, Monday Monday morning, uh, got an email from AGC, you know, <laughs> dear Sudhi, da, da, da. And, uh, you know, immediately all of us like, oh shit, gonna, gonna pop ma, man. <laughs> like, um. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, it was a healthy relationship. They 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 pointed out the the factual error we made. Uh, we went to check, and yes, indeed, it was a factual error. You know, so we mm-hmm. corrected it. We issued a correction, mm-hmm. you know, correction notice at the bottom mm-hmm. to tell the readers that we've had to edit. And then we replied to them, and and by two p.m. everything was sorted, lah. All all mm-hmm. very nice and happy. And, I, and I'm making this point because you know, five you know five years ago, odd independent media and government did not have such a healthy relationship. Mm, la. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, often it would be much more antagonistic. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think um, not just on our side, but I think the government as well realizes that, you know, they, they need to have this more fruitful relationship because there are mm. more and more media outlets coming, people are looking at more stuff. So I think rigor, rigor took us a while, but I'm happy with where we are. Um, the other point you made about people's voice and having a say and creative decisions mm-hmm. and things like that, mm-hmm. uh, that's actually something, you know, we, we try quite hard to have a very sort of open democratic process within the organization mm. where, where anybody can kind of raise their hand and um, contest me or oppose me on anything. La. You know, I'm, I'm technically the editor-in-chief, but, you know, mm-hmm. pe- people can question everything from, you know, bigger decisions around... Um, what format we want to go to? Do we want to yeah. do podcasts? Do we want to do video? Yeah. Two two much smaller decisions like the actual wording on articles and, mm. and article headlines. People have that ability. I hope. I mean, hope my colleagues are not here, but I but hope you, I, you sit on like a higher chair, like the Speaker of Parliament, yeah, you know, then it, press it, a mic, you know, like I let think, them talk. I think I'm rich at what you just. Yeah, said. Yeah, really, <laughs> then after you call the next person, you mutter stuff under your breath. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, people yeah, pick yeah. up a they, 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 they were just joking that they they, they have to create stickers or, or emojis for you know when I'm actually genuinely asking them a question versus when I'm giving them an order. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a conversation a few days ago. oh because it's a it's an ambiguous thing is it <laughs> no because i i, I think I'm, this is my personality la. I'm, I'm 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 sometimes a bit reticent to just issue an order to anybody right so I yeah kind of couch it in a nice way and say, do you mind yeah i don't know Oh, oh so no. you, you you try to couch it in a nicer way and that's why people I un- think I think that this is what I suspect and, yeah. and I think it's a long, longer conversation we had to have internally at Joan, but I suspect that that even when I feel quite strongly about something, yeah, it yeah. doesn't o- o- often come through, you know. Uh, so I'll I'll, I'll I'll approach I'll have the same very open handed approach to or you know uh, but in your mind you're thinking like in my you mind, better I, do I, this right <laughs> now. <Okay. laughs> yeah, so I think I'm getting this again management things I'm learning right uh, uh. on the job. Uh, and the whole team is very uh, uh, accommodating of my learning journey. We mm. we talked about my learning journey as a boss right mm. from the start, mm. and they're all very accommodating of it. Uh, but yeah, I think I think I have to get a little bit better at like when I, you know, distinguishing when you know I feel very strongly about something and it has to get done yeah. versus occasions where I actually um you know don't really know what to do and let's hear everybody's view on a topic mm. lah. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think it's a bit blurry now for the team. Yeah. For mm, hearing mm, the two from me, and, mm. and because yeah, you I think you before this you were also talking about uh certain um uh, certain different different opinions within the team like, right about uh certain Titles, headline yeah. certain headline that that you were uh you had recently like, right about um I think it was about an article that one of your one of your yeah. writers was doing like, and uh you said that it, it it bordered on a almost like a generational kind of uh, difference as well, right? In in thinking about where, how this, this title was structured. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, to... what, what what was the, the generational challenge there? Yeah, so the for your for your listeners, mm. uh, the, the the title of the article, it, it was an article on a weight loss journey. Yeah. Right? Which was uh, forced upon uh, Donald Lowe, who's a writer and my friend and co-author of a book with me. Mm. Which was forced upon him by him becoming uh, clinically obese yeah. over over the COVID period, right? Yep. Uh, and his doctor told him that you must lose, you know, ten kilos as fast as you can, lah. Basically, mm. because you, you know your un- unhealthy levels, he, yeah. they measured his fat, uh, different fat levels and things like that. Yeah. So he's he's I guess he's oh he's turning fifty this year, and um, I think 
So the title of his article, and it was a great article because he's he's a behavioral economist. Mm. So it shows how he uses these behavioral uh, science cues and techniques to actually help him in, on his weight loss journey, lah, right? Mm. And then the title is of his article, which which he proposed and and which I liked, uh, was called "How I Nudged Myself to Lose Ten Kilograms in Ten Months." Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, when the team saw this title, I got some pushback because. Uh, there are worries around uh, fat shaming, mm. uh, perpetuating a diet culture. Yeah. And I think the other interesting thing that we have to think about is th- these were less of concerns in the print era, mm. Mm. right? Mm. Because in the print era, you don't have decontextualized clips yeah. so much. I see. You have the headline, you have also have the article, yeah, mm. and you'll immediately know that, okay, this is not some like fat phobic, fat shaming type article. Yeah. It is somebody's yeah. actual health journey, right? Yeah. In trying to inspire other middle aged men who might have to go through the same health journey, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but in the digital era, as an editor, I have to worry about decontextualized clips, mm. right? Somebody might take a snapshot la, of just yeah. the headline. Just la. the headline. You know, why is Donna Lowe promoting uh, uh, extreme weight loss, radical weight loss, right? Sure. With, without really understanding. And and I mean there 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 are two concerns for for us. You know the 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 bigger concern I guess is you know what if somebody who is in a vulnerable state, mm. say a person uh, suffering from bulimia, for example, mm. if they suddenly happen to see this like in, in this again in this crazy information world that we live in, if they suddenly see this flash and then it somehow affects them even in some tiny molecular way, right? Yeah, it affects their own perception of themselves or or their own journey. That's that's a worry. The, the other worry for Job is um, if e- even if it doesn't hit a vulnerable person, mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. even our general readers, if they see this kind of headline and then they're like, "Oh, Job is not being careful. Mm. Job is not being sensitive. Mm. Right? It may not affect me, but it may affect somebody else." So, yeah. so th- these sorts of things are more of a concern now in the digital world. So the compromise uh, I suggested, uh, which I don't think totally. Uh, placated my my younger buddies and and mm. Terence, I'll come to the generational thing in a second. But, sure. but but the compromise I suggested was how I nudge myself to lose ten kilograms in in ten months. Yeah, comma as advised by my doctor. <laughs> mm. You know, so so I thought if we put that as advised by my doctor, it's very clear lah. It's a medical thing. You know, it's yeah. not you're uh-huh. losing weight to like fit into the you know yeah. new, newest thinnest clothing that you want to fit into lah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. But you know, it, it seemed again that this didn't satisfy either side. So, so, so the reason uh, I would say it's. But anyway, that, that's the headline we went with yeah. ultimately, lah. So yeah. I, when I say it didn't satisfy either side, that there was some on the behavioral science, uh, you know, economist side, was like, oh, you know, it's a very clunky title now, lah. The, mm. the shorter one was nicer, mm. and it, it also didn't completely uh, satisfy my younger colleagues. I think who who were worried about fat shaming and fat phobic and all that. Sure. So why I say in particular this one is a generational thing. Um, is because the issue of weight loss for I think people around my age. So I'm I'm 46 this year. Mm-hmm. So people around my age, the issue of weight loss often has a health element to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Whereas with people in their early 20s, yeah. mid 20s, it can be for a whole bunch of other mm-hmm. reasons, man. I mean, mm-hmm. we we all know our society, like many societies, uh, prizes thinness, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. prizes a certain body image. So uh, it could be for a whole bunch of other reasons. Um, that's one, and I think also generational in terms of language. Like that there's a lot more language sensitivity, mm-hmm. uh, often for good reason, right? Uh, among the younger generation, and yeah. when I say often for good reason, it's because you know I think. The older generation, we've gotten used to some words, we've internalized some words that mm. actually can be harmful to others la, mm, mm, without us even realizing it. So was it a, a, a learning curve for you to come to that realization? Because everything you're saying now to me it makes sense. But yeah. I, won't, I won't deny that when you first said that, I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I, but, know, I know, I yeah. know. For, for me too, yeah, but it, yeah. It sounded a bit far out, but yeah. But it means it took you like a while to come to make that logical point uh, uh, step process la. I think uh, so most of the conversation was on Slack mm. Mm. I think what I'm getting used to as a manager and editor now you know it's different from when I was last was in a proper full time job in a company right where the main yeah. form of communication was over email or mm. in person mm. now a lot of it is on Slack yeah and I think there are different forces that I have to think about as we as we come on that journey to getting to that point of understanding, mm. la, you know. Mm. There'll be people weighing in at different points in time. 
uh, there'll be people. I, I think also maybe with with a sense that um, that that these decisions have to be totally democratic, mm, and mm. as in like if there are five votes against the title, that means I have to give in, lah. But, uh, but you know, which is some which is a which is a democratic force I have to push against because yeah. ultimately as the editor I have to it's make the call, call lah. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but we do have. I mean. I mean to counter that the the one thing we have in Jome, uh, and we spend a lot of time thinking about our decision making processes. But but to counter my like any dictatorial or autocratic powers from me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is important. Um, my my uh, my two co-founders can actually overrule me. They can they can you know the, which is one of the many safeguards we've put in place, lah. Oh, so they're like your so my council two... of presidential advisors. Correct, correct, yeah. exactly. <laughs> or like a senior exactly. minister that you can consult for private matters. Correct. And if you fuck up, they can do the investigation. Ah, uh, exactly. The I same see, person see. who was informed about the matter will also investigate the correct, matter correct. and then will clear me. Very robust. <laughs> very, very, very robust. Very robust. Very robust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but I mean, like, like, um, it's it's great to see like even now like friends who maybe never even heard the podcast with you that we did with you they have mentioned Jom in passing la. then I'm like oh that that's that's awesome because I think it is becoming a source of information especially for in-depth stories most, most recently I guess is Rideout la, where you all did some yeah. very very comprehensive pieces yeah and and you know for an outfit like um, when you first saw those things bubbling up what was going through your mind? You're like, okay, this is something that it is going to bubble up. Uh, or was it like, we'll ride out the ride out, you know? Or, 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 we, or like, what was that process like? Actually, when, when, the, when, the, when the case first came about, okay, so, so I'll say a couple of things. Uh, I've known that they were living there for a long time. When I say long mm. time, I mean like two, three years lah, maybe. Mm. Okay? Mm. Uh, and the reason I know is because when they, after they moved in, so I think, Shanmuga moved in first, then Vivian moved in in 2019. And house party, yeah. huh? House party, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah no, no, no. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, 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 I got a couple of, I, I got a couple of friends who are closer to the PAP la, and you know they, they, um, that 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 they, they were like. The, I forget what the messages You're said. You're going to get mentioned in Parliament again. I forget the messages <laughs> said, the, but, but the messages were around the fact of, oh man, you know, have you seen this house? Have you seen the house where they're living? And, oh, uh, you know, wish we could get an invite, go to this, go to that. So it was interesting because in, in that in that small circle, it was mostly talked about in a in, in very fawning, flattering ways. Wow, uh, okay, you know, okay, yeah. our, our ministers are, oh wow, amazing. They're, they're, they're kind of cornering the whole ride out neighborhood by yeah, staying yeah, yeah. there, right? So you knew that uh, like, you knew. So, I, I knew they were staying there. I knew they were staying there. I I, I didn't know the exact house number or okay, that okay. lah. You know, I, yep, I knew yep, they were yep. staying in that area. Um, then so my first feeling when it got splashed uh over the internet, I think it was Kenneth J. Random, mm, right? His blog. Yeah. My my first feeling was like, this is a bit unfair lah. You mm. know, to 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 have your home address and yeah. all that kind of thing. I was like, this is a bit too much, lah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I feel bad for everybody who's living in that yeah, house, right? It's yeah. not just the ministers. Right? I don't know yeah. who else is living in the house. I mean, like, who wants that kind of spotlight? But I, I mean, to counter that, people have also told me, ah, yeah, you you know, you're a politician. You're in the public eye. Is 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 part of the you know comes with the territory, lah, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, but that was my first instinct. I was like, oh, this is a bit like, why is it being splashed all over the place? Yeah. Um. But then after that. I think the deep, the final deeper question for me is, you know, which has slowly emerged, lah, is why do we need in a land scarce country? Mm-mm. Why do we need to conserve so many of these bloody properties, lah? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Why do we need so many? I don't understand. What two hundred sixty mm. over or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't understand. And even if you say, oh, the the structure, what architectural yeah. value, British times or whatever, fine. Yeah. Why do you need all the land? Yeah, yeah. Why do you need all the land around it? Mm. I think the, the, Save the house, lah. You, yeah. you need all the land. That, that was the big mm. question for me, lah. Like, just why? Like, why do you need to stay inside such a big place? Why do we need this big place to even exist when, yeah, we don't have enough land everywhere? Uh, and, and, you know, if it's for conserving the, the heritage of it or that, then why don't we let more people actually go and enjoy it, go and see yep. it as a park or something, you know? So, yeah, ultimately, it just came down to that for me, lah. Like, like I think we talked about it on our podcast. At the end of the day, I just don't understand why you know they, he chose to stay there or why they chose to stay there and things like that. Uh, but oh yeah, actually, just touching on the um, what you were saying earlier about the fact that it, all the information came on a blog. Because uh, in my 
view when I was reading all that things, all everything that was coming out, I was thinking this is almost like the work of a experienced journalist, right? <laughs> that pull up all this information, whether it's from SLA, from, from public sources and all that. So, and then, but the way it was presented was very um, boomer speak, la, you know, like all capital letters, so angry kind of thing. <laughs> so it's like, there's a bit of disconnect between the quality of the journalism and the, the final output that came out of it. Yeah. Well, what do you think? I mean, if you could speculate and, and think what happened there, like how come there was suddenly such a avalanche of information that was actually quite like, you know, solidly researched and everything? And how did it fall in the lap of... of uh, oh, you mean KJ's someone? blog? Uh? Yeah, 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 yeah. KJ's blog. Uh? Uh, okay, so I, I, I didn't I didn't read through all his uh, mm. words. Yeah. So I, yeah. I can't comment on the... It's a word salad. Uh, it's a I, lot, I, lot mm. of things, yeah. I can't comment on his literary abilities, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but why did he suddenly put that out and where did he get the information from? Because you, you like you and said... And why hasn't yeah. the government hantamed him? La? You know, when... when, when him, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Why hasn't the government, yeah. Mm, yeah. you know... People have talked about is it is it doxing to to reveal somebody's mm. house, house address? I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah, we, yeah. I don't know the answer to that. And and but why hasn't the government come back harder? Um, so one interesting theory, which again, uh, I it's just a theory, but yeah. we do know that there's been increasing factionalism within the PAP mm. in the last few years. I mean, we mm. talked about it in my, yeah. the Oxley piece and everything else, yeah. Yeah. right? Because yeah. yeah. there are people within the PAP who. Uh, are very unhappy with the whole Oxley saga, right? Uh, yes. And they think it's not doing the party bread any good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For so much time to be spent on a personal matter. So, and the, you you see the factionalism as well in the way we selected our next Prime Minister, Lawrence Wong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you go back a few years, it was Heng Sui Kiat initially. Mm -hmm. There were different, you know, and then Ong Ye Kang's base versus Chan Chun Singh's base. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's very clear that there's more factionalism within the PAP. One theory with the ride out thing is that it's, it's the their opponents la, within mm. the party who 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 uh, have been feeding this information to the outside. I I don't know how true that is, but yeah. you know, mm. yeah. uh, as with any uh, as with any political party where you have different power centers, which is the yeah. case of the PAP. You, you ha as for me as an analyst, I have to entertain these theories la. It's yeah, it's plausible. Sure. It's yeah. plausible that there were particular leaks or prods of information because I mean the the main thing that's been put to me is that. Uh, Again, I don't know if it's true, but uh, Shanmugam has his eyes on the DPM role, mm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, he's, he's a future DPM in the making, apparently. And this was one way to potentially prevent him from ever go going in that route. Because mm -hmm. now, you know, he, he's been tarnished and he's been... Yeah, so I, I don't, you know, again, theories, these, these are all yeah, theories. 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 Yeah. 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 Talk about them as theories, but like I said, we, we as analysts, we have to entertain them. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So then, you know, when that whole thing unfolded, because when I also first read the blog post, I was thinking, yeah, is this just another one of those angry blog posts that will go nowhere? Mm. But, you know, in the weeks that followed, it it it, it occupied, like, a lot of Singapore uh, conversations. Mm. Um, of course, some people didn't give a shit. Some people gave more of a shit. But did, did the general reaction surprise you? Or was it kind of like, from the time you saw the first blog post, which you yourself first said, you know, is it is it the right thing? And everything that happened in the subsequent weeks, right? Yeah. Did it surprise you? Um. Huh. Uh, I guess not, lah. I guess not. I mean, the 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 reaction by people was unsurprising in a way. Um, you know, because and 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 what I mean by that, um, mm. clearly the whole housing affordability issue is on so many people's minds. Mm. Yeah. It's it's easily going to be the main election issue mm. at the next general election. And yeah. for, for me, there's no doubt. Yep. Um, and diff you, you can see different political parties already coming up with their different housing plans and all that kind of thing. So, uh, the optics of this, even though it's unfair, I think, in a way, what happened to, to have their address revealed, um, but the optics of it are just horrible, man. Mm -hmm. Forget about the legitimacy of, you know, the, the, the process. And uh, even if I assume that they did all that, everything's kosher, la, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the optics are just terrible, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you're talk, you're, you're, you know, uh, Shanmugam's property is three football fields big. 
Mm, mm, right? Yeah. And you can you just imagine the idea of of him sitting in, in his property mm. and you know pontificating about the struggles of the ordinary Singaporean? It's it's, it's horrible. Is it yeah. you know how, yeah. however you cut it, it's just terrible. So yeah, I the reactions I saw online, I, I don't I mean I don't know what you guys saw, but uh, it, there seemed to be a lot of ang- anger and uh, unhappiness over this issue, lah. Mm. And and along with that was some you know misunderstandings about you know how much the property should cost and how much mm. rent they should pay and, you know, is it comparable to outside private property and all, all this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But what, 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 what was your sense of the, of the public reaction to the, to the write-out thing? Um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, for me, like, initially when I saw it, I did feel like something, hey, that, basically the optics, lah. but I wasn't sure how much people would care. Because right now, when I go on LinkedIn, I see so many things that make me feel like, oh, fuck. So then, or I go on Instagram, you know, oh, these people living their amazing lives and is it anything to do with them or is it just my own insecurities? Yeah. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, is this just uh, like an emotional response or are other people going to feel the same way? So when I saw some people feeling it and and, and uh, like, um, like echoing that, I was like, oh, okay, maybe there is something there. But then I would see the other argument that, oh, they did the processes and there's nothing wrong. Then I also was thinking, okay, it's true. These houses are there. There are processes in place that people don't have issues with. They follow the process. So what's the big deal? And it was a back and forth. Like, but where I landed was, yeah, like, this just looks horrible. Like. The optics, yep. they can, they could have done nothing wrong. But the optics are fucked up. Especially in this climate. Like. So that's where I landed. Mm. But uh, for you, Terrence? Uh, it, I think it triggered a lot of... Uh... Uh, insecurity la, in in where where I am in life la, right you you wanted to be a politician <laughs> no, no, no 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 <laughs> but when we went to parliament I no, mean, no, no, no. Like, oh yeah we were, we were seated <laughs> above them but you know we did not have the right to use phones and everything like the rest yeah. of them that, that's a defect. no no but um it's true it's in that it was a very polarizing thing and initially i thought wow it's such a this is such a outrageous thing for them to be you know the optics of it are terrible so i would I would, it would be something I would ask people, like, what do you all think of this ride out road? And what I was starting to realize is that, yeah, even a lot of friends, you know, that I grew up with who were always last time traditionally anti-establishment all that, a lot of them were just turning around and saying, actually, what's the big deal? You know, they, they're important people, they contribute a lot to Singapore and all that. And then, yeah, they just like to stay in this big place and they did everything above board. So what's the big deal, and then on, on the other hand, you're seeing all the breakdowns of like what, how much rent it is per month and how much they're paying all that. And then you, re- you realize, yeah, it, it really shows the, 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 the you know, across our society, the, there's a spectrum. Uh, there are people who are doing very well in life. And then they start to see, you know, those people above them and they're like, yeah, they are, they, they're, you know, they're doing well in life. He was ex-lawyer and things like that. And why shouldn't he be afforded? You know, why shouldn't he have the right to stay wherever he wants to stay, even if it's a nice place? As long as he abides by the rules and all that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it just made me really think about, oh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people in, in Singapore who who do, they are, you know, in that bubble, right? In that Singapore bubble and doing very well and all that. And they sort of co-opted into their systems. Like, you know, if if I'm I'm doing well, you know, it's a meritocratic society. I'm doing well. I, I paid my dues and I deserve this, you know? Yeah. And there was a, a lot of the sense of what I was seeing also in some comments that were supporting it. Like, like, right, there's nothing... I think uh, Calvin Ching was like, oh, he sacrificed so much in his career and everything to, to do this. And why are we doing such a... doxing him and all these things. Huh? So yeah, it just made me realize that, oh, it's something... This is really a, a question that will divide you know, people at the dinner table. If I ask yeah. them, hey, do you, what do you think of this? And it's very, you can start to draw a very clear line. There's these people who doing very well in life and the Singapore living the Singapore dream and all these things. Yeah. And they're like, okay, this is fine. Then there are those who are like, oh no, this is terrible. And then I, then I get I get lumped into that category. Like, just because I ask, a, ask this question. You can lump into the latter category. Yeah, they're like, hey, oh. Terrence, you're very, you're very NTPAP, right? And what do you think? <laughs> think? So I'm like, wow, this is, is, is uh, very illuminating about you know, even the people, like their responses and everything was very illuminating. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. even friends that I thought would be like outraged and, you know, wow, I'm going, I'm going to say something on social media. They're like, no, no, I think it's okay. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, was, is there a sense you no, get? No, those people fawning, fair. those people fawning in the text message, were they like, 
Did they turn around and say, "Oh my God, I didn't know that I was at this <laughs> place and all that"? I uh, no, no, no. I, 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 it's hard for me to link the two because it, it happened a few years ago, mm. and 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 I also got forwarded messages, so I, I didn't yeah. know who was oh, saying okay, what, okay, and okay. it's that kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of clumping together views I heard lah, right? Mm. As opposed to the yeah. same individual saying the same thing over time. Um, but actually, one thing you touched on, which is interesting, is that it's it's also a nice thing about Singapore lah that that through these conversations, you know, yeah. we're actually seeing the diversity here in our in our political ideologies. Mm. Mm. Some people are much more comfortable with this level of inequality yeah. and with the merit quote unquote meritocracy we have here. Yeah. Other people, and I put myself in this camp, uh, feel the inequality is just way too big. Mm. Uh, the merits of the meritocracy are oversold. You know, yeah, our meritocracy yeah, yeah. doesn't actually work as yeah. how it's advertised. Trickle down economics. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, but but the nice thing is, I mean, that, that's what a democracy should be about, mm. right? We should have these contesting ideas on the plate. And I think yeah. I think the ride out saga actually exposes it quite well. Uh, yeah. That different people have just had different views of of what's the next best chapter in Singapore's Singapore's uh, evolution, right? Mm. Is it to carry on with the system that allows for these gigantic properties and people to rent them? Uh, I mean, the other one of the many injustices for me is that if you look at the facts that have been laid out about the ride out thing, yeah, you know, uh, apparently, uh, who who will be able to afford to stay in such a place? Mm. The the mm. maintenance, the upkeep, la, all these kind yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. It's there's basically a structural issue where. Only a tiny handful of people can even afford to stay there, lah. Yeah, mm, you right, know, right. only a tiny handful. Yeah, we've created mm. this structural issue, and and like then to say, oh, but we follow all the procedures, but yes, but you're not actually talking about the structural issue, mm, mm, mm. where state property actually in 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 effect is only available to a select mm. few. Yeah. Mm, mm. But one thought I had was that I should have gotten a group of friends together. We split the rent like 50 ways. Yeah. We can each still have like 4,000 square feet each. No? You like, can have your own music festival. You can inside. have your own music <laughs> festival. Right, right you can have uh, Halloween horrors. You can have a uh, like fake beach party. That would That is the missed opportunity for me. You know, like 250,000 square feet, 5,000 square feet each. And you can get 50 people living in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it did yeah. shock us because that time when we were filming our TV series, we wanted to rent the airport, the old airport. I think. Yeah, the Kalang Airport. Kalang Airport. And we actually went down and we were like very, like it was a beautiful location. Uh. But they were like, oh, you know, you if you want to use the space, you got to bring your own toilets. You got to bring your own electricity, your generators and everything. So the cost of all that equipment just to get the place up, up and running was more than whatever rent we would pay already. Wow. So we're like, wow. you know what, this it's beautiful, but it totally doesn't it was make a, sense. It was a black and white. Uh. No, 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 but the old Kalang Kal Airport. So, oh, sorry, old Kalang yeah, Airport, we, sorry. We wanted a ballroom scene. And you know Singapore ballrooms, how expensive they are in hotels. So we're like, oh, check out this place, SLA, is a big location. We went there, it was beautiful, everything, but just we, wow. we, we, we would need to cut in like four or five of, of our own generators, bring our own pot, pot -a potties and things like that. I see, I totally see. Totally did not make sense. So I can imagine like, yeah, like what you said, yeah, the rent is low, but like, the cost to just maintain and live in the place is crazy. Eh? But then if you replace Kalang Airport with Kalang Airport Mall, that one also people will complain. <laughs> right, I'm right. sure there's a, something else you can do besides just making it a mall. Eh, right? <laughs> no, I think like what you said, like, like even the ride-out property, you want to preserve it, you preserve. Mm. But around it, there's a lot more that can be done. Like. So yeah, you can yeah, preserve yeah. the structure, like, right? Yeah. Um, because I remember the first time I saw it on Google Maps, Probably Google Maps also had a spike, uh, Google Earth, Google Earth. Totally. Where you can see the the extent of that place and that was what shocked me. Like, I remember reading the blog post and I was like, how big a deal? You go to Google Maps, you're like, oh, this is a big fucking deal. Yeah, so, so but I mean, now as as we have kind of, it's kind of closed-ish, um, how, how, like, what what impact do you think it, it has like, on the political situation in Singapore with that whole case? Or you think it's just another one in the bag, people are going to forget? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just one point on your, on your last comment. So, the, the, the best thing I think Balakrishnan and Shanmugam can do, right, is just like open up the space open for other house, people. Open, like, right. open house, <laughs> We're you know. We're talking about NTV Crip style. Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Come they, on should, they should totally do that. <laughs> and, and I think with SLA properties in general, we should find a way to uh, open them up to institutions or organizations that mm, we think mm. have social value, but that may not. Um, be able to afford it, yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it's civil society organizations or art, arts activist organizations, or whatever. I, I don't think the government would ever do that, but I mm. think that would be a, something they could do. In fact, Balakrishnan says his is three generations in one house, right? I will pay to watch them function. 
<laughs> like you just go there reality it's show. reality TV show <laughs> three generations of the Balakrishnans under Bala, one roof the Balakrishnans at 31 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why you know, I would pay I would sit on the lawn rain shine as long as I can watch what happens sure, right it'd be fucking entertaining it would be it would you just be. hook it up with cameras it can recover all the costs and preserve yeah. every black and white house in Singapore yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a great idea, man. You should, and bring it to him. you should bring it to <laughs> him. him yeah. We'll show, we pitch a show together. La, to and his property is well over one football field. Bit, yeah, big, right? So yeah. they're probably talking to each other on walkie-talkies. Yeah. And like, yeah. it'll be great to see the dynamics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like pigeon, you know, like yeah. raven for drone, the... Uh, drone, they fly drone. drone to each other. Yeah. So much potential. Then you recoup everything. You can give handouts to like all your neighbours and like everyone who complain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll pay. It's I'll a, pay. It's, pay a, it's, a, it's a great idea. Your you should uh, go go with it, man. <laughs> but propose it. Three football fields is like you could do a co play concert in that in that location. Uh. Yeah, private Three concert. Fields. Private concert, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, yeah, FAS, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe they give the building to SA, FAS to you know three more football fields to you know, FAS, uh, <laughs> the, the most well-run organization in Singapore. Why not <laughs> three football fields for them to produce a new generation that will bring us to the world? Yeah. Everyone stays in the black and white house. You yeah. train around there, then you go back to the black and white house. Yeah, but if you're not oh, good enough, you yeah. stay inside. Yeah, it's a football inside. camp, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, much yeah, potential, yeah. no? Hey, totally, totally. Actually, yeah. you're so right. much potential. Uh, but the but the but the impact, the impact. Uh, okay, firstly. I don't think it's all done and dusted and closed. La. Oh, you don't think mm. so? Okay. I suspect at the next election, oh, oh, okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. this is going to come issue. up in some way, even if, if in a satirical way. I mean, I, I myself am thinking about how to play on the satire of this, la, just for fun, right? Mm. Oh, on, of, mm. of, of the Rajas of Ride Out. Uh, yeah. when, when, I, when I want to talk about the housing issue, right? Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good device, I think, for any, any artist or writer to think about. Uh, yeah. So I don't think it's completely done and dusted. I think uh, the other thing is is to see how it affects the internal dynamics, lah. Mm. I don't know how it's going to affect. You know that we just don't know enough about how the PAP operates inside. Is mm. it? I mean, is Shanmugam going to go on a witch hunt now to find out who who pacha who, who, who you know all, all this kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are the things that we don't see, right? And, and I'm like, I'm very curious about that. Mm. How this incident will affect internal PAP dynamics? Yeah, yeah. I think even when we were in Parliament, um. I think there was one point where yeah, Pritam was asking very pointedly, were your phones seized by the CPIB? Right? He asked a couple of times to make just to get them on record saying, No, my phone was not seized and, and all. So and he said, Oh, thank you. Okay, and then he just moved we, on. We, 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 which is an important point, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the CPIB seized his phone. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. So so I can see that's that's he's building up a uh, ammunition chest, lah, basically, of yeah. things that it can be used down the road. Uh, but yeah, so I also don't think that it's the end of the saga per se. Mm. Like we will see it, it, it's we'll see the ripple effect uh, continuing on. Um, yeah, for the next at least the next year, la, Yeah, and mm. the and, no no no, it's, and and the and the thing that it it totally fits into the pattern of own self check own self, which Singaporeans mm. are increasingly fucking tired of. Mm. Increasingly mm. fucking tired of. Uh, one one of the suggestions that Harpreet made in our yes. write out piece, yes. right? Was that why do you just get a former judge mm. yeah. or something like that who's yeah. enough credibility to to lead the investigation? Why do you get Teo Chihen to lead the investigation? Yeah. yeah. So I think if, if you see that as another thing, which I think a lot of Singaporeans are pissed with it, right? The the whole own self, check own self thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It fits into that lah. Yeah. But mm. you think you see that as a when when you say a lot of people are pissed, like like what makes you say so? It's just more comments oh. of, of of own self check own self or, or? yeah la, I mean I'm, I'm not done a, I, I don't think there have been surveys done but uh, we should actually uh, but mm. I think just seeing on commentaries and, and comments and all that la, and conversations with people mm. like like you know what are Singaporeans concerned about of course there are the bread and butter issues that we all know about Yeah. but I think increasingly there are also the more uh, philosophical ideological questions about you know, building a healthy democracy, Mm-mm. compassionate society, all those sorts of things. Yeah. And and it's within that that this sort of, you know, what are the checks and balances, own self, check own self, mm. that it falls under that. Yeah. Some people say, oh no, Singaporeans only care about the bread and butter, right? But I think you're increasingly seeing both. La. I think both are important. Mm. Mm. So not just yeah, not just the the day to day like make ends meet kind of thing, but the bigger picture of things. Both, like. I think both both are important la. You know, we we, we sometimes we uh, I mean sometimes I get lost in the second one and I forget about the the basic bread and butter issues, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll spend so long writing about oh, 
that our democracy is flawed in this way and all that. But you know, actually, yeah. at the end of the day, it's you, can you afford your copy and can you you know yeah, yeah, we're yeah. very important things, right? Correct. Yeah. So I think both are important, and and I think a lot of Singaporeans are seeing that increasingly. Mm. Yeah. Anything from your? I mean, for me, it's always something when I, when I when I travel, and I get a sense of perspective of, of of talking to people and all about how you know housing, for example, in Taiwan. Uh, you know, the reason you see a small three-story thing next to this giant new mall or complex is because they don't have uh, as easy a way to unblock, you know, uh, uh, an old property or anything like that. Lah. So that, that's like institutional structural way that they set in such that it, this is how, you know, democracy functions. Like you really have to get like 90, I don't know, 98% or some crazy number just to unblock a place. So that's why the city skyline is just this like mis- mishmash of old oh. buildings and new buildings and all that. Okay. So when I get when I see things like that, then you know I think about okay, Singapore, yeah, it, it, there are a lot of uh, issues with whether the flawed democracy and all that. But now more than ever, there are all these foreigners flocking to Singapore. You know, uh-huh. it makes me think: is that is it really because there's such a big push factor outside, or is it that at the end of the day, you look around the world, you know, which democracy is not flawed and everything? Yeah, and 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 in Singapore, do we are we closer to? Uh, so-called right answer than, than the rest? Is that, that why people are coming in and in droves and driving up property prices and all? Like, is it is that something that makes you, like, um, yeah, think about, okay, what, uh, you know, people wanting to move here and driving up property prices, is that really such a bad thing for Singapore at all? No, no, there is a great, great point and I can answer it also through talking about the media sector, right? Mm. Because, um, People sometimes ask me, oh, you know, not happy with the media here. Mm. You know, which country's media do you like? Uh, And mm, actually, there's no country, I would say, with an amazing media sector. Mm. There's so Mm. much polarization in America. Yeah. Uh, There's so much uh, misinformation. The polarization doesn't lead to better informational outcomes. You know, for example, a lot of Republicans think the whole January 6th uh, Capitol thing Mm. was a a big hoax, right? Yeah. Um, So... There's no media sector I can point to, but you know, I, I kind of turn the question around and say, you know, why why do you always think that we're trying to emulate somebody else? Mm, mm. You know, we're operating in Singapore and we're just trying to improve the situation here for everybody. Yeah. And I think that's true as well for the, in many ways, for the country at large, you know. Yeah. It, it's not like for our democracy at large, it's not that we're, oh, there are many other democracies that are much better than us, which actually there are. Mm. There are, right? Mm. But we also have to just figure out our way of improving our democracy la, mm, mm. without being beholden to others and without also fearing that, oh, if we have more political liberalization, we're going to become like Malaysia mm. or we're going to become like Taiwan. or uh, Actually, Taiwan, I mean, Taiwan is in, in many ways a very respectable uh, democracy in my view. But, mm. you know, there are other places that have more problems uh, with the democracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's my view on that. La. It's, it's that, that there's, there's often a fear here about like, liberalizing or pushing in a particular direction yeah. because we're comparing ourselves to a worst case scenario overseas. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And then like, why? <laughs> we, we, we can be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, mm. that's why I told the person who, I recently who said, hey, you you support opposition, right? And I said, I said, no, I love the PAP. I love Lee Kuan Yew and what he stood for. And everything. That's why I'm calling out all these things, you know? Yeah. That's why I don't like uh, all these things that he would probably would have called out in his younger days and all that. Did you, really, did like, you get invited back for dinner? Uh, I probably, don't know. probably I don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> you won't know. You won't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You won't know. You won't. If it, if you don't know, it doesn't hurt you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but is that true that 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 you guys like you sometimes at dinner parties and all you all have a oh your reputation is you all are anti PAP or anti government and that kind of thing. Uh? is mm. it is that baggage that comes with? I I oh, haven't no. I haven't oh. got that much. Okay. Uh, yeah. I haven't. I don't. They they know that I have something to say about it lah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I've made a point not to also, like, impose. Uh, like, I, sure. I don't want to just start having a podcast in the middle of the dinner and that kind of sure, thing. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, because yeah. from from my perspective, you all do a. I mean, actually, better than most. Uh, probably better than all commentators or podcasters I've seen. But you, you all do a really good job of getting a broad spectrum of people, lah. Oh, okay. Thank to, you. Right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you'd to. have you, you, you have PAP ministers sitting yeah, down yeah, and having yeah. a chat with them. Yeah. You have, you know. Uh, in fact, per- Mr. Pariah is like myself. <laughs> is coming out everywhere. Yeah. Sudhir, we got a surprise for you. 
<laughs> Come on out, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but yeah. Yeah, so, I think, so I, I mean, I, I would yeah. be surprised if somebody ever said, oh, uh, uh, MOF or, or, or Yalabad is like, has any kind of Th- like. I think there was one, some people posted online when we had like uh, Janil and Elvin uh, within the space of a few months. Uh, and we had some commenters calling us Yala Yala but PAP or something. Oh, is it? Is Yala it? PAP. But they want Yala PAP. But they want also we see as like an, like, it's just a comment. Like, it's just a comment. Yeah. Because we do want to make sure that we never go down the path of just one, one uh, philosophy la, or one yeah. one side of the political spectrum. Because then our name also doesn't make sense. Right? Mm. Then it's just Yala. Uh, <laughs> it's not but anymore. But there needs to be the but. Yeah. So you are the but. I am the but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The but of all, yeah. But do you, do you, you feel that when you go for social gatherings and all, then people are like, oh, now you're the, the job editor I, and... And, and, and cannot uh, say anything in front of Sudhir. Yeah, cannot say. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> fucking populist. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. No, no I, I, I mean, there are a couple of things I'm comfortable with. You know, I, I, I do have uh, some sort of leftist values that I hold quite dear, mm. including uh, much less wage inequality. I think some, mm. something Singapore needs to move mm. towards, right? Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, ashamed to talk about that openly. Yeah. Uh, but the other problems I have have to do with the media. Uh, I, I do get this like, oh, NTPAP, you know, always whack the government kind of like label on me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what people, I, I think, what I try to explain is that uh, for many years, uh, I think it's changing now, but for many years, independent media, people like me were filling a gap, right? Yeah. You know, because the mainstream media, the mainstream media's coverage is so biased. Mm. It's gotten better, but it's so biased that when other people come out, we we have to fill gaps and fill niches. Yeah. That there's no point in me creating some false balance where I, for every one good piece of the government, I'll give you one piece against them. That, mm. That's that's false mm. balance, yeah, I, yeah, And yeah. I don't need to do that. It's not serving anybody. Sure. So obviously, most of my pieces will come across as more critical of the government. Mm. But it's just because that oh, yeah. that gap is, needs to be filled, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. We're we're just naturally forced to do that. But then, unfortunately, and, and even with some of my closest friends from from you know JC and all that, right? Mm. They'd be like, "Hey, how come you always hunt up the government?" And mm. so I have to like explain this this informational balance that we need to to keep, la. Which yeah. I think with Joe now, it's it's gotten better because things have changed in Singapore for the last 10, 15 years, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I don't think with Joe, I I feel that pressure so much. Has it changed the dynamic of relationships in your life? You mean uh, with, with 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 uh, my colleagues or or with, or with the government? Or? Just like people who knew you from the past. Um, I mean, you you have always been writing. Yeah. But with Joe, you know, where there is a lot more content being out there, and right now you are very closely associated with Joe and what it stands for, la. Yeah. Has it has there been any impact in the relationships in your life? Uh, like with friends, like With friends, you know, different political beliefs. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, 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 not really. I, I, I actually think, yeah, uh, most of my friends who are either pro PAP or pro opposition, I, I, I think they appreciate the work Jom is doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and thankfully, I, I'm, I'm always thankful when this happens. But, but you know, we, we have our own internal values, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes our own internal values don't match up to, uh, what any political party is putting out there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, an incident that allowed allowed us to express it, and I'm, you know. In, in in hindsight glad that it came out was the repeal of 377A last year mm. Mm. right which uh, and Joe wrote an editorial on this um, we we basically said that there were only two MPs uh, whose positions we agree with uh, uh, Think Ru and Sylvia Lim yeah so we disagree with all the others including all the WPs mm. including including the PAP politicians uh, for different reasons you know there, there was a repeal of the law there was a constitutional yeah. change there were all these things going on but I'm glad in a way that that gave us an opportunity to show that, you know, Joam has our values and if neither party aligns to our values, we're going to call out both parties, Mm. right? We're not going to just, for the sake of politics, be playing one side or the other, which is not something we should be doing. Mm. So yeah, so that that was an example that allows, you know, so I think people across the divide uh, actually quite like Joam, my my, my friends. Mm. So there there hasn't been any impact on my relationships uh, Mm. with them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, even for us, like the the process of going out to the media and talking about what happened to us with the liquidation and hope uh, all that, I think the response we got was actually very surprising. Like for myself, lah, mm-hmm. I felt like there were all these people that I thought knew about what had happened in the situation, all that, 
a lot of them message, oh my God, I did not know that, you know, the, you, you guys were going through this in the past year and it makes me even more, you know, uh, I want to support you guys more and, and, and you know, I, I feel it's great that you are speaking up, you know, because we had, I think we had the fears, like, you know, of like, oh, you know, uh, in Singapore, the people don't talk about being owed money and it's very uh, not uh, kosher uh, and then you talk about big corporations like bullying the little guy that's not and whether kosher. people will care also. yeah whether people even care so uh-huh. we were very uh very pleasantly surprised by the very positive response we, we not not from media or what but from the friends around us or you know friends of oh. friends and all who really came out and, and sent us messages and, and told us you know uh, you know lawyers reached out to us and say hey i want to help you guys just you know send me whatever documents you have. You know, pro bono, they're all just coming forward oh. and saying, I was going to say, be careful when lawyers reach out to you saying they want to help. <laughs> be very careful. <laughs> true, true, true. Correct, correct. Yeah, but there's some, yeah, this one really is, is, is yeah. really like, yeah, let, oh, let's be for lunch yeah. and just see how, how we can, can you know. They, they reach out on WhatsApp and guarantee us 200% yeah. returns in three months. No, no, no. no, no, no. Yeah. That one all don't have. But, but yeah, so, so yeah, to that, to that effect, sometimes, um, yeah, we you know, I feel like even for us in the space, right, we, we feel like, oh, it's so, there's so many constraints on what we can say on do and but a lot of times the the support that we get from people on the ground can be very surprise surprising and and uh inspiring in some ways mm-hmm. like, right yeah 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 yeah. Mm. yeah yeah i think it, it, it what you just said plays to some bigger teams around you know ride out and everything else i think mm. uh we've come from a situation where there's a lot of inequality not just income and wealth, but also in terms of your voice, who yeah. get, who gets to speak, yeah, yeah, who gets correct. to argue, who you know, and and what you all did is great. It's it's because people don't aren't supposed to take on big corporations, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. so 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 I think anything that that plays to helping the little person have a bigger voice or a bigger say in society is is actually at, particularly at this point in Singapore's evolution going to be quite important mm. and, and inspiring for other people. Yeah. So so on, on the opposite end of inspiring and, and in inspiration, what what are you worried about Singapore going forward? Like what keeps Sudhir up at night? Or at night you're like zen? <laughs> Too tired. <laughs> <laughs> Too tired. <laughs> ah, dealing with this Gen Z. Yeah. Qualif- yeah. Qualifying <laughs> for the next World Cup. Oh, uh, okay, okay. No, no, no. Um... My biggest worry is around immigration and xenophobia. Mm. By mm. far. That's More my so biggest worry. cost of living. And yes, like, you, you, you I, it's related. A, it's related uh, in a way. You had mm. an episode recently, right? With, uh, I think, uh, oh, yeah, a yeah, yeah. driver. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had a, yeah. I had a racist incident with an uncle. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just describe it very quickly. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, I, I live in Pasiris, which I sometimes call Paris, uh, and and um, I, I'm very proud of my Pasiris neighborhood. Yeah, you messaged uh, it like Paris like five <laughs> times in our group. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I was jogging one morning, and then you know this uncle had stopped his taxi. Clearly, he's a non-Parisian. You know, he's a intruder from somewhere else, and mm. he had stopped his taxi near one of these uh, small condos, and he got out, and there was a big one of those big green rectangular. Uh, trash cans la, mm. right the kind with the big cover you need to open la, right and he he just cleared his taxi of this clump of used wet tissue and he just threw it on top of this green thing la. Mm. you know what I mean yeah. not inside no, right? Oh, on, it, on the bin just whacked it on top yeah. was getting back into his taxi to drive off and uh, so I, I would just happen to be jogging back coming out of Pasir Ris Park and I saw him and then I'm like I'm like hey hey no, no, you can't do that. You better put it in properly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, uh, I don't think I was aggressive or harsh initially, but I was just very direct, la, right? I just yeah. said, hey, you better put this in. La. You know, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, and he totally didn't like that, man. That He fucking blew his lid, man. He, he, uh-huh. he, he then started off, uh, why can't I do that? Uh, you know, something, he started talking about something about COVID and about said, you, you touching stopped, bins. You stopped to, to engage with him. Yeah, oh, I stopped okay. to engage with him. Oh, you so, weren't running on the spot to keep the heart rate going on. <laughs> I, I kept cooling down already, cooling down already. <laughs> um, and, and, and then it very quickly devolved into, oh, you are from India, right? Mm. Th- that's what he told me and you know mm. unfortunately that's a real like trigger for me I get totally fucking triggered like, when people mm. drop this like shit mm-hmm. um, and then I had to you know, yeah that was at that point I started to get quite heated like, mm. and then I started shouting at him and he shouted back at me uh, you know then I, I went up right next to his taxi and I'm like 
I was born in 1977 in Kandang Kerbau Hospital. You know, I, I, I said shit like that. <laughs> I said shit like that. Like <laughs> yeah. Which actually, I, I always feel bad about saying it because, mm -hmm. you know, then it, it makes it seem like, oh yeah, only native born people mm -hmm. have the right to talk. Oh, yeah, I, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm unconsciously subscribing to your mode yep. of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 But actually, it shouldn't matter where my... It, you know, if you litter, I should be able to tell you you litter. Yeah, la. Yeah, doesn't matter yeah. where my passport is, right? Correct, correct, yeah. Because we're, we're all part of this society called Singapore. Yeah. And and um, so I, I feel bad, but it always happens. Uh, and then he, then he started arguing, arguing a bit more, and then he's like, oh, I, I, I've I got my dash cab. I'm going to make you a social media star. I mean, he said some shit along those lines. La. You know, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna put it on Stomp or something. La. Mm -hmm. And I was like, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so yeah, th that was a recent incident. And, and um, I, I, I wrote to Comfort to try to get them to do something. I don't know if they did anything with, with, with the driver. Don't you know, all, I, 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 I said, don't penalize him, but you know, just give him some racism education. Mm -hmm. So sorry, uh, it's not Grab, it was Comfort. Uh, comfort, Comfort, okay. Comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Comfort. And um, I don't know what happened with that. But but I think the larger point is uh, we've had extremely high immigration from the late 90s to at least mid, like 2015, 2016. Mm. Maybe it's slowed down a bit. Um, and unfortunately, there's been a huge racial element to that. First, there was a, a Chinese, ethnic Chinese racial element, you know, mainlanders mm. kind yeah. of thing, not speaking English. But in recent years, it's been more of a of an India Indian uh, racial element lah, mm. Sika Indian lah. Yeah. And I really don't like some of the messaging that comes from some of the political parties, uh, in particular uh, Lim Tian and his party. I don't mm. think they're very careful in how they talk about this issue. Mm -hmm. the, the way they talk about it I think just has the potential to inflame tensions a lot more yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us are concerned about immigration I think immigration has been too high I think it's not been managed properly mm -hmm. too high meaning because it's led, led to pressures Yeah, and I think unfortunately given where we are now uh, we're, we're going to be living with these pressures for the next at least couple of decades I think yeah yeah so yeah, sorry, very long answer, but mm. that's like my biggest, biggest question. keeps me up at my biggest worry, man. More than keeps that, you at night, uh, keeps your heart rate up when you're shouting at the, the, the driver and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I, 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 and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. It, it's quite a deep issue that will be here for some time. Because, I mean, our birth rate is also not increasing, which means that you hear all this talk about how we need to have people come in to, to fill up the workforce. Mm. I don't know enough of that, how true that is. Yeah. We also have an aging population, which means our workforce is going to be declining. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, hmm, but interesting uh, that that is your... Yeah. No, I, I, I think immigration is fine. It just has to be managed properly. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And integration and everything. Yeah. yeah. Those are issues that need to be... I mean, I, I don't think we need to uh, grow the population as quickly. Mm. Mm. Yes, we're not creating more humans, but mm. there are other ways to uh, restructure things such that we don't have to keep growing the population. Yeah. Yeah. But I but if we did need more people, yeah, I mean, you know, I think just fine with with managed managed immigration. Managed immigration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has been done much better, much more clarity, much more transparency. Yeah, much more selling of the of the political selling of the of the message to people. Yep. all these sorts of things which have never been done, lah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, probably a good time to also ask, like, what is, uh, what's new for Jomla in the next mm -hmm. the next coming few uh, six months to a year or so? Uh, I think. Two of the big things we have planned is our first uh, long video series and our first long podcast series. Mm. Uh, our podcast series, what I can say is that uh, it's going to be on, on a political figure. Yeah, that's about all I can say about it, and I'm quite excited about that. Uh, our and it's kind of for for podcasters uh, or podcast listeners who know of uh, the Prince by the Economist, which is about Xi Jinping. Yeah. That we kind of took inspiration from that a little bit, um, and our video series is, I guess, all I can say is that uh, it's it's on a pretty big historical event in Singapore, mm. and we're we're kind of like looking back at it and covering it and thinking about the impact it's had on Singapore. Mm. Again, I, I don't want to say much more than that because I'm just I'm just very nervous. The, the, the reason I, I'm hesitant is because I'm I'm very nervous about scaring away interviewees which in Singapore mm. is always mm. the, the the big fear lah you know yeah. it's hard to get people to come on camera uh, come on air as I'm sure you guys know yeah. to talk about shit so that that's why I I don't want to say any more about those two but but they they are our two biggest projects of the year lah so mm. I mean you know people know Jome as this weekly digital magazine but we with these two projects I think we'll 
we'll push ourselves out of our comfort zone a bit more. Mm. Oh, sick, man. And and right now, the best way to keep track of, of Jome, of course, sign up for the 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 digital version, but yeah. also on social media. Where are you guys on social media? Everywhere? We're across most platforms, yeah. Threads. I forget. Media. I haven't tried Threads yet, man. Mm. Are you on Threads? threads. I downloaded it, but oh. I haven't interacted much. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you look but, like an early adopter kind of guy. I'm an early adopter, yes, yeah. but whether I pay much attention after the adoption, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I, I adopt early. Yeah. I adopt early. <laughs> well, all the, yeah, the, all the, the influencers are there already. La. The oh, sashers and all of them. Oh, yeah. they they want to be the first to the land grab like Now is the land yeah, grab grabbing land grabbing yeah, now is the land grab. everything. Yeah, yeah. So jump on it lah. Just jump on it and, and see what happens. Jump on it, yeah. Jump on it. Oh, yeah. okay, jump. okay, okay. <laughs> but like, where are you guys? The sort of Instagram. Oh yeah, Instagram. I I forget our exact handles, but I think if you search for Jom Media or Jom mm. Media, it's you know we're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Mm. Those uh Twitter, we have a presence as well. But you know, as you said, because of threads, I don't know, I don't know where Twitter is going. So. TikTok, no? TikTok, we just <laughs> have one video, I think. Uh, if I'm okay, not wrong, okay. one or two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Still, still getting there. Still yeah, getting, getting there. Getting, after now, he's used to management. The next step is to get used to doing dances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He already started with together. a Gen Z selfie. Gen Z <laughs> selfie, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting point because it, it gets back to my earlier comment about, you know, the, the format and all that. Lah, and, yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. we, we, our grounding is much more traditional journalism. Sure. Mm. So TikTok is the one that's probably furthest from that. Yeah, mm, in terms yeah. of the social media channels, so we're, we're working our way towards it, lah. Yeah. I, I I do want to figure out how we can deliver concise, you know, quality snapshots of Singapore on TikTok. Yeah. We we yeah. need to figure that out. Mm. It's important. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, exciting. But cool. Yeah, cool, man. But we always end with like the the one segment. Yeah, that as always is the one shop thing uh, of uh, of the week, right? Yeah, I didn't give you a heads up, but yeah. since you're a veteran. Uh, we'll give you like a few minutes while we talk about okay. our one show things. Sure. Okay. Uh, I need to pull mine up. Yeah, mine, just... uh, mine's a Netflix series that I just started watching. It's a Korean um variety show, I would say, about it's called Risky Business. Uh, and it's actually about the adult industry in Japan. Oh. So it's basically two Korean uh, entertainers, a comedian and a singer who just go to Japan and every episode they explore one aspect of the adult uh adult uh, what do you call it adult business uh, adult industry in yeah, Japan yeah so the first episode they you know went to um basically a sex toy uh, store la, and they just went through from the first floor all the way to the top floor first floor was like you know couples things then men's masturbators and toys and they ended up in the VR the VR room at the top oh. floor and things oh. so it's, it's very interesting because it's a uh, they talk about, you know, in Korea, there's no such thing as an adult industry. So even as, you know, the neighbors and all that, uh, it, everything to them is such a shock. La. And even for, for me, having visited Japan, I never, I mean, I never explored those adult uh, department stores and all, but they have like, the, the culture that, it, what's, what's really interesting to me was that they managed to interview people who were like literally browsing porn in the store. And they just talk about it like it's the most normal thing in the world. Like it's just one aspect of their lives that they get. Oh, you know, uh, that day I got drunk, I missed the train. Then rather than stay in the hotel, I just went to the adult VR room and just stayed there overnight like, for like $23 a night and just probably jerked off to some porn and all that, like, you know. <laughs> so it's the most normal thing they talk about. Then they ask, there's a sales girl at the at the adult toy store and then they talk about, oh, so how do you test your products? Oh, yeah, yeah I use it. You know, they, they, I do my research, I read a book, then after that I try it on myself, then okay, I, I know how to talk about it to my customers and all. And it's a limited series or? I don't know limited, but I only watched the two episodes. And then the second episode they interviewed, they sat down and had an hour-long interview with like three AV actresses. Oh. And yeah, they just talk about uh, how in Japanese culture, why, you know, fulfilling your sexual desires is just, it's just like, Eating, like eating your meals to be healthy, or or you know, exercising to, to to feel good, and you know, making sure that a whole generation of men do not go out there and commit sexual crimes. Uh. That's how they actually paint what they do. Oh. Uh. So, so it's, it's interesting. So it's like to, a safe outlet, lah. Yeah, yeah, mm. okay, okay. Yeah. So so it's interesting because uh, yeah, the, the, you know, it's coming from not from the Western culture, kind of like looking yeah. at Japan as such a weird place, but from. Korean culture, which it, by itself already is quite interesting, you know, they have very interesting uh, cultural practices, examining what what Japanese culture is like. Uh, yeah. mm. 
interesting, interesting. See, risky business yeah risky business yeah i think harish will like it a lot uh. yeah yeah i i'm good i'm i already <laughs> want to watch it i already want to watch Just it the the, the 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 range of masturbators that they show in the hey, in hey, the hey i'm not because of that la <laughs> fuck it's just because it's going okay. down it's the okay. dark side of things oh. is always fun. Yeah, yeah, okay. And you know, nicely, once I, you get my agreement, then you throw in this fucking thing to change the context. It's okay. It's okay. That's the whole point of the show. That it's okay to talk about these things. Don't need to feel shy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So my one show thing is is actually something structural. Like um, apparently in Las Vegas, there is this thing called the MSG Sphere. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. At first, I thought it was a joke or something, but it is literally is the world's biggest LED screen. Mm. It's five hundred and eighty thousand square feet of LED screen around a sphere, and it's totally programmable. How many football fields is that? Like, like you got ride out road. If ride out road is three, yeah. so six lah. Six. Oh, okay, okay. Six. Yeah. Two now there's a benchmark. How many? Ride-out how many yeah. twenty six ride out roads? How many ride out yeah. roads are in your place? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but this thing you look at the videos, it. It dwarfs the buildings around it. There's a picture of it when it was celebrating the 4th of July. It's the American flag in a spherical fashion. There's another photo of it as an eyeball. Mm. And and apparently once it's fully open, it can fit like 18,000 people inside uh, to, to watch shows and shit. So it's not, it's, it's not say there's nothing inside, you know. Mm. It's not just circuitry. And it, it blows my mind. It, apparently it also costs $2.3 billion. But you look at it, you're like, oh, that's an architectural feat that you don't often see. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. it's insane. Hey, it's funny. It's so funny. Uh, just four days ago, my friend visiting from SF, because uh. she's on her way to Vegas next month or something, and she showed me these videos of this thing, and man. It's crazy, it's crazy right? man. Yeah. I was like blown away. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, what looks, is this? it looks like a CGI kind of thing. Totally, totally. I thought it's all fake. Yeah. She showed... <laughs> I also saw, then I saw the articles, I was like, oh my God. That's my one shook thing, man. So I bookmark the shit out of this. Mm. And yeah, it's my one shook thing. La. Nice. It's insane. La. So, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. mine's a bit dated, but uh, I just got into Station Eleven. Have you guys watched no, that? No. On, uh, on HBO. So it's, it's HBO. a... HBO. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a show about, um, a, you know, the world on the brink of a pandemic and then, you know, going through the pandemic and everybody's dead. La. It's one of these, yeah. like, uh, apocalyptic shows. But, but uh, what I really liked is... It kind of follows this uh, Shakespearean dance troupe kind of, uh, or, or theatre company, sorry, mm. Shakespearean theatre company around as as they try to make sense of, of a world with nobody else around it. Okay. And they're still putting on performances and travelling. Oh. Uh, so there's a lot of themes around art, belonging, community, yeah. uh, healing, right? Which I which I thought are just really powerful, man. So it's, mm. it's a, I think it's a few years old now, but I just got into it. Station Eleven. Oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah. So basically, um, like the story of non-essential people during a pandemic. Non- is, uh, what do non-essential people yeah. do <laughs> during a pan- <laughs> pandemic? Okay, okay. It is almost both, it's almost like post-pandemic, like the, like everybody's died, kind oh, of like, okay, like okay, okay, apocalyptic okay. kind of world already. But uh, oh. but um, the can I do one more? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay, the, the, the 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 local thing that's fascinated me in the last one week, right? Yeah. Is all the stuff around purchasing Taylor Swift tickets? Uh, oh. There's just so many angles to it. I keep hearing a new angle. Yeah. Uh, somebody I know, I won't say who, but somebody I know, mm. you know, was telling me about using a, a, a they, they bought a link from this person on Carousel. And it's been reported already, actually, mm. in the Straits Times, this person who was selling direct links yeah. on Carousel to the, so, you know, and then um, people queuing up at Sing Post for 24 hours and all this 48 kind of, hours? Oh, 48 hours. Two uh. days, 40, I saw someone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? Uh, two days. So, yeah. I, I think this, I'm still kind of processing it, but just the the behaviors, it's just quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you the know, the yeah. question I keep, I ask people is like, uh, what does Taylor Swift mean to you? La? And uh, yeah, when I talk to young people, they're like, I think like last Friday, one, one told us that uh, she was there for every heartbreak. She was there for every milestone of her life. Mm-hmm. So to her, it's like even if she can just sit outside the stadium and just hear the music and be in that in her presence, it's yeah, important yeah. lah. So that's that's the I think there's a whole generation that grew up with that. You see, because she really has she's been around for a long time lah. You know, even with a young age, you know. So it's I I I know it's everything we see is quite ridiculous because we're not I'm not a Taylor Swift fan and all yeah but I can understand like where that comes from I, yeah. I I wanted to go I wanted no, to go yeah, yeah I want to go so I want to go yeah but, but for yeah. me it's just as a just spectacle yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah spectacle. so some of my younger friends got 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 upset when I said I'm just going with a spectacle <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, there's more no meaning <laughs> for me right? but but actually 
uh, I saw a documentary of hers on Netflix a couple of years ago. That's what hmm. first turned me on to her properly. Turned you, turn you on to her. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Terrence, <laughs> Terrence, <laughs> we're not we're not talking about Korean uh, risky businesses anymore. Um, um, and uh, what I what I sometimes tell people is I I find her like a really good journalist of the heart. Mm. Wow, I know people like piss on her like oh you know like every breakup you go and write about it or yeah, yeah, people, yeah, people have yeah, different yeah, ways yeah. of like pissing on her yeah, 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 yeah. but uh-huh. but when I look at some of her lyrics I actually think she's quite a good journalist of the heart yeah my my wedding first dance song was uh, Lover by Taylor Swift oh, oh. and if you it's your yeah. choice huh? uh, no it was pitched and oh, pitched. I I actually really liked it oh, okay okay yeah, and same thing like I never used to be a fan of Taylor Swift yeah. but when listening to the lyrics and the melody and all I was like yeah, I was like, Terrence was clearly getting drunk in my wedding like, because he didn't remember. <laughs> um, but it was, yeah, Lover by Taylor Swift and I fucking loved that song. Oh, no, nice. And yeah. then, uh, even, not, not even about Heartbreak. I think she, because I, I was was a lot, I was moving around a lot in those circles of like people who had lost, a uh, baby lost like, that during that period when it happened to me. And I think she had one song in her last album that a lot of mothers were like, just broke down listening to because it was about that sense of, of losing a child. Uh. Oh. Yeah. So when you say journalist of the heart, I think yeah. it's more than just about, you know, like like heartbreak or all that. Uh. Yeah. She really hits yeah. really emotions heart. for a lot of people. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Uh, so yeah. so hopefully in like 20 years, people will talk of Jom. Like, you know, Jom was there with me through mm. every saga. <laughs> every parliamentary <laughs> saga. Every parliamentary <laughs> saga. Every yeah, parliamentary exactly. saga. Every time I walk past Parliament House, I think of Jom. Yeah. Uh, then, then it's testament. Then yeah. it's testament. No, but, but I, I, I think that it's true, you know, because that day I was just sitting in a cafe and then they started playing Taylor Swift. And then suddenly the whole topic of oh, I couldn't get tickets, everything came up. And then I realized people probably now getting PTSD from listening to Taylor Swift in public because <laughs> yeah. they can't get, especially those who can't get tickets. Uh. It's true, it's true. So, so it's like, it's, it'll be quite, um, I think at least until the concert, everything, a lot of people will be like, wow, very charged up talking about this, talking about Ride Out Road and all. Then probably that <laughs> weekend was... also, or through all the six shows, if you post, you'll get a lot of hate also. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. I was number 640 something thousand in oh, the queue. Oh, that's not bad. Uh. No bad. Uh. Yeah, yeah. No bad, no bad. Oh, okay, okay. Once you go past like a million, then you know you're yeah, fucked. Yeah, yeah. uh. But you're planning to go with Swifties or just like yourself? As a, um, you know? uh, no, with a couple of other people, but they're not Swifties. Oh, they're not all Swifties. spectacle. Not, not real Swifties. Uh. I'll, I'll just go there, arms yeah, crossed. Yeah, hold, hold, hold on, just sit down. Yes. <laughs> article on Jom, and then you need to caveat by saying, by saying things. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so there probably will be that, that niche of uh, people at the stadium. Uh. The yeah, people yeah, who are yeah, there for yeah, the spectacle. Yeah, yeah. Just there will background, be, there will be. just judging everyone and all that. Yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be fun to just look at the spectators because yeah, be. there'll be those who can who can uh, sing along to I've every word, video, sing yeah, along yeah. to every word, it's right? And then crazy. there'll be the others who like just there for the spectacle. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. like you know like Edwin Tong and and those uh, kind yeah, of people yeah, as yeah. well who'll be there. Uh, Chan Chun Singh also, uh, I think, trying to get her to perform at primary school or something like that. Right? That's why <laughs> is it? Oh, are you serious? no, he put out he put out a challenge to primary school. Oh. Uh, people, uh, primary school kids to, if you can get Taylor Swift to come to your school to perform, your school can have a public holiday the next day. Oh. He said that. And then I think oh. uh, some teachers as a result have been uh, doing, uh, like making students write essays about it. Uh, like why Taylor Swift coming to your school would be a good idea. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I have a running bet with a friend that that uh, probably maybe there is something in the works la, like for, for her to do some appearance somewhere and Chan Chun Singh will be like that now you can consider me for PM exactly <laughs> exactly I love that how everybody is using this for political yeah, leverage yeah. if I can bring Taylor Tom. Swift I can bring uh, the future of Singapore okay, yeah. I can bring Singapore forward uh, forward, SG. Singapore forward yeah 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 crazy cool, <laughs> cool man yo thanks for yeah, thanks. thanks for it's coming been fun. Back. Ah, it's been fun thanks for having me Anytime, man. Yeah. And like when you have your future, like those two projects coming up, uh, and if you want to come and talk about it when you when it goes live, you're most oh, yeah, welcome. Yeah. Especially now that you guys have the two plants on the table now. I quite like that. The yeah, exactly. Touch, it's touch. very symbolic. Yeah, symbolic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Cool, man. Right. Awesome. Thanks, Sudhir. And thanks for listening, everybody.